Hello everyone, welcome to yet another Cave Diver React. My name is Gus. Hi everybody, it's Woody. And today we're going to be reacting to a video that I promised it was going to come out a few weeks ago. Uh, a few weeks ago, I posted a poll in our community tab. If you're not a subscriber to Dive Talk, please go ahead and subscribe because we post on the community tab all the time. Yes. And one of the things that I mentioned on the community tab is I gave you guys an option whether you wanted to see uh, a story from Ed Sorensen versus see one of my videos doing Sidewinder training. And people voted for the Ed story, but I promised this one was going to come out. They voted for Ed over you? Who knew they would pick the best cave diver in the world over me? Um, <laughs> I would have... I voted for Ed. I think I would have voted so. for... Well... <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> so um, so today I want to show you the Sidewinder training video. Um, I added basically everything that... Ed recorded from me uh, on the class. And I just wanted to give people just a quick summary of what happened. So I've been diving the KISS Spirit, which Woody was my instructor for that. Do you remember these? They did a great job. Yes, I remember those. Um, and I've been diving with the KISS Spirit, the, my main rebreather, for two years. I got certified in 2019. We've been getting after it with the Spirit, diving a lot. Um, but there are some caves, specifically in the Bahamas, where you have to have a side mount rebreather to get to. And the side mount rebreather that I chose is the KISS Sidewinder, which is very similar to the Spirit, but it's side mounted. So the scrubbers are mounted on the sides. So your profile is a lot smaller. You can fit through restrictions that you would really struggle or it would otherwise be impossible to fit with the Spirit. So in order for you to be able to dive a new rebreather, you have to go through a process called a crossover. Uh, you have to be certified to dive that rebreather. So when I bought my Sidewinder, I went and talked to Woody and I said, who should I go to to get certified on the Sidewinder? And what did you say? Well, even though I was a Sidewinder instructor, Ed Sorensen. Right. I said, look, Gus, do yourself a favor. He teaches pretty much, I think, exclusively on the Sidewinder. And I'm sorry if I'm wrong on that. I don't know if he teaches anything else. but He, he teaches also, in other units, but the well, Sidewinder is his well, main. Well, when the guy part. wrote the book, he wrote like the book, yeah. the book with his authorship uh, yeah. uh, that he authored, this book all about the Sidewinder. Yeah. And I think he helped design it. That would be right, the guy to yeah. take it. He dives it almost every day in caves. Yeah. So anyway, long answer to your question. I yeah. told you to go to Ed. And not only that, but you also mentioned that you did the Sidewinder training with Ed when you got certified in Sidewinder a couple of years ago. I sure did. And you mentioned how much of a high level training that was and the kind of the the standards that he has for training were high. I also and then he puts you. Right? I also remember in the middle of it going, it's been fun. I failed <laughs> in the middle of the training. I'm, you know, I'm done. I failed. I mean, I just messed this up. But yeah. I'll continue. At least I'll get the training. But, you know, I probably at the end, it'll probably say, okay, but you failed. Right. I didn't. But I kept thinking that. So I reached out to Ed at Cave Adventures, and he was here, as we talked about. If you haven't seen the video with Ed, you should definitely check that out. And I said, you know, I have 200-plus dives on the Spirit. I want to come and, you know, learn Sidewinder. You know, how long is that crossover for it? And he says, three days. And I'm like, what? Why do I need three days to dive in the same unit, basically, that I've been diving on for two years? And he said, oh, you need three days. And before you go on, yeah. Now that you've done it, and we'll we'll get into it. Yes. Do you think you needed three days? Well, the answer is probably we'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll cover that. <laughs> and on you the know class. what's and you know what's amazing just to help set this up. Overall, the yeah. functionality of the Kiss Orca Spirit back mount and Sidewinder, as you said, is the same. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? The functionality. Yes. And you're like. Why? Three days. I mean, okay, yeah. so the scrubbers are on my side. No. What's the big yeah, deal? I'll, I'll just, you know, spoiler alert, I'll say I wanted more than three. I, I wish I had more, more time. There's no way you can do it in less than three, I, responsibly. Agree. 
unless you've been like illegally diving somebody else's sidewinder. Because mine, I opened the first day of class. First day of class is opening the box. Like I never even tried it before the class. So if somehow you had a sidewinder, you were you have been diving it for like months and months, and you have a ton of experience, then maybe you can do it in less than three. And, but and another, I need it for sure three at least. And another spoiler alert. The configuration of the Sidewinder to get it to properly fit you yeah. is an art. Yeah. That Ed's team and Ed Unbelievable. are the Picassos of, right? Oh, yeah. They get it to fit you because that's the key of that unit. It's got to fit you properly or it can be very uncomfortable, actually. Yeah. So keep going. Yeah. Ed Sorensen is really the Ed Sorensen of Sidewinder configuration. <laughs> like I mean... He's mine, I, mine, unbelievable. I, mine, I kept, um, I couldn't, when I switched over to a different BCD on it, remember, I just could not get it to fit right, yeah, unbelievable. go there and they fix it. So anyway, so I go down to Mariana, Florida, where Ed is located, Cave Adventures is located, and I go to my training, brand new cave, brand new unit. I show up and within a day or so, I had the exact same thoughts you were having. I'm like, I think I'm going to fail this class. Um... Because was that after day one? Yeah, yeah. After day one, I I I I knew I was gonna fail. Mm -hmm. Like I, I wasn't even thinking like I think I'm gonna fail. It was more like I'm going to fail mm -hmm. the class. Um, I was already thinking about when can I come back and redo it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna need more time. This is hard. Mm -hmm. This is very hard. And I was already a diver on a unit that is almost the same. So anyway, so one of the things that Ed does, which I think this is great, and a lot of instructors do this as well, is he records video of the training. He has a camera mounted in his mask, and when you're doing something that he wants you to work on, he will turn it on, record video, and then he'll give you the video I do later too. on. I, yeah, I, I actually do that got too. that from him. Right, so. right. And you use the same camera, right? The parallel. Yeah, same one. Um, and um, so anyway, he gave me the videos after the class for me to, you know, review, analyze or whatever. I asked for it for dive talk. I knew that whether I passed or fail, I wanted to show them here. I'm very self-critical and Woody hasn't seen these videos. I actually haven't seen them either. I kind of like just put them together in order of how they were shot. So we're going to be reacting to them together. Woody will give me his thoughts. I'll give you my thoughts. I'll talk about what happened. Some of these might be boring, but hopefully we'll get to talk about why some of these exercises happen. Yeah, and, and I'll just say that um, Gus is very good. I mean, you were a student well, of mine on the spirit, and frankly, you were. Uh, it came pretty natural. The thing that's hard for all of us, and I'm speaking for myself, is, look, when you're on the Sidewinder, the purpose of the Sidewinder, the entire purpose of it is to have really good trim and keep a low profile. So yeah. it's not, will, and I don't know, I haven't seen it. Will Gus know how to deal with a problem and then correct the problem? I'm sure that came pretty naturally. But for all of us to master proper buoyancy and trim, On which is the unit. purpose of yeah. the Sidewinder, that may be... I, and I don't know, but that yeah. may be what you were struggling with. It's what I was struggling with yeah. at the beginning on it as well. Yeah. Just to set up. The, so you will uh, get to see this. Once again, I am not an expert cave. Contrary to popular belief, we're not elite cave divers. Elite. I'm I'll call, I'm a beginner yeah. cave we're, diver. We're just certified cave divers. That That's it. That, we're still yes. learning. We're still getting better. So this video will show you that we're still learning. We're still getting better. Of course. That's what it is. Um Day one, by the way, most of day one is just assembling the unit, unpacking it, putting it together. So 75, 80% of the time is doing that. You do get to get in the water, but it's mainly just swim around to see how you feel on the unit. So what you're about to see is day one. It's very, very short because it's just the first swim that I did with a sidewinder. So you get to see kind of how my trim was right off the box. So let's check it out. Day one. So this is my first swim ever on a sidewinder. Beautiful. Let me lower the volume a little bit so we can talk about it. So this is a Jackson Blue. There's people swimming around and stuff. Hey, where's my keyboard? Oh, that's right. Hold on. Let's pause it so you can get your keyboard. Because I was going <laughs> to pause. 
Turn it off. Shocker, right? I'm going to pause. Hey, Make let sure me you tell turn you something. Off. Let me ask you a question. Yes. That's your first swim on the Sidewinder. That's right. Isn't it amazing when you first put it on and you go underwater, how it puts you into trim? Was that pretty awesome. Was that like a, oh man, wow. It's was, pretty awesome. I, mean, I remember you, feeling that. You still have to focus, but obviously being a rebreather, diver, and a cave diver helps. On top of having the sidewinder, which also pushes you into trim. Yes, but look that at helps. the look at the streamlining. Look at the, um, I mean, one of the scrubbers on the right is a little bit up. I'm sure right. you, you can adjust that by well, changing that, the length of the bungee and pulling it down. But overall, it isn't it amazing. It right? looks pretty good uh, to be the first time, and and you can see the O2 bottle is a little bit weird, and so that's what this was about. And we actually used this video to tweak the unit for day two, so it will okay. actually look better on the next days. But this is just me. Go and by the way, uh, I'll just point out right here on the bottom. I'll just use the mouse for it. There's a river coming out of this thing. Yeah. Like you can see this stuff blowing right here on the side. This is like seagrass or whatever. This is blowing out. So I'm trying to stay away from the flow. But at some point, I'm going to try to do a very poor helicopter turn here. And I get kind of caught up in the flow a little bit. And I kind of lose it. So I'm just pointing that out because, you know. Here we go. So I'm supposed to do a helicopter turn before I hit the flow. You can see the grass is getting blown up. And I get caught up a little bit. Yeah. My legs, at least. Nice job. That's not easy to do. Yeah. But you see, I start going a little... Not super flat, but I thought it was okay for the first time. Yeah. I think that looks really, really good job. All right. So, see, he's, t he's saying that I am not flat, that I'm a little bit high. So, he's just filming me. And these are all spliced together. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason. All right, so that was just day one. It okay, was just... one thing I want to comment on. Yeah. You have, I just want to put it in perspective. You have potentially the world's greatest sidewinder diver instructor watching you. Yes. I mean, okay, there's three or four that could be in that world. I don't know if he's one, two, or three, but who cares? He's definitely in the top three. For sure. Okay. If I was evaluating you where he went like that, yeah, I would not have done that. I thought, and this shows you why I said go to Ed. I'm not your instructor. <laughs> I would have been like, that's really good. Why? Well, I didn't see any silting. You weren't hitting the top and you were maintaining buoyancy. Were you perfectly like this? No. Is it good that Ed is that detailed? Absolutely, because yeah. I think we are in agreement, Gus, you and I have a commonality is that we're not afraid for somebody to tell us, do better, and this is why and what you need to do to do better, or why right. pay yeah. for the instruction. Exactly. Just go out and dive it and be, don't listen to anybody, you know yeah. better. So I want to put it in perspective. That's the level that Ed is going to give you instruction at it's going to be that detail he wants you to be ed perfect if possible. he's going to yeah, try perfect. to bring you to the highest level possible right throughout your entire training and because of that it can cast doubt in your mind wow i was basically being told pretty much all the time to fix something so i must have failed I right. Like to and, set that up. and I think and I think that's part of it. I think that that's what makes it also valuable if you do pass. Like, you know, if you do get the card from Ed at the end, I think it makes it it, it it's a confirmation that you earn it. That he you know, if he thinks you're good enough to deserve the card, then you know that's a that that's valid. So anyway, so day two comes in, we make some adjustments. We're back in the cave, so So I'm frog kicking. This is Medi. He was helping. Medi was great, by the way. He is. Looks like there's flow. You're oh, yeah. not moving. All right. So I want to point this out because this is when, when Ed gave me a whole class about water dynamics and cave dynamics. Oh, and yeah. All this he stuff. does that. So if you notice <laughs> where the cave is, where, where Ed is filming, he is filming and there is like a rock right here, right? That rock is actually blocking the flow of water to him. 
And what he told me is that he noticed that I have, that I can do better when it comes to picking places to swim in the cave. And he's 100% right, of course, because you can see that I'm swimming in the cave. And yes, I'm in trim and I'm in the middle. I'm not hitting anything, but there's nothing in front of me. So I'm getting pummeled by this river. I mean, it's 190 million gallons of water a day. This is a really, really high flow. And I don't have the best frog kick, to be honest. And I'm pretty big as well. So the water is, is hitting me. But I normally can kick pretty decently. And you can see that I'm hardly moving. And I'm kicking hard and hardly moving here because I'm still learning about water dynamics and like the cave, um, the way the water moves in the cave. So you can see Medi and Ed are on the side being blocked, but you can see my bubbles, whenever bubbles come out, they get blown away. So here I am frog kicking, but I'm in the open cave. You can see, this is what he says. You can see the cave all the way to the end. He's, he's like, that's bad. You should always see like a rock in front of you. So, yeah, trying to make some adjustments along the way. Yeah, look look where they are. Yeah, they're like right in front of a rock or something like that. Okay, that's me again. Nice. Good looking trim there. So while this is going on, because I'm not really interrupting any dialogue. Hey, See, like he, he's oh, telling, stop. he's saying Medi. Don't like he just kicked twice. I saw that two flutters, he and like he was that. like, "Nope." I saw like, that. Did you see that? <laughs> hey, so let me ask you a question. On the sidewinder, I'm noticing yeah. that you have a, I guess, a safety reel or a jump reel yeah. on the back, and the loops are on. That's the katana too. The loops are kind of um, they're high up. They're not down low by your butt. Yeah. Do you have any problems reaching that? No. Okay. I I, I do. I mean, I don't do it comfortably, but I can reach him. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I, I I have to, even on that one, I still have to kind of lean a little mm. to reach it, which isn't perfect because as I'm leaning, I'm sort of changing my trim, right. which could cause you to lose buoyancy. And a cave like this with high flow, it can toss you around. Goner. Yeah. Okay, so then I'm coming, I'm touching the bottom, which he didn't like. Oh, no. Of course. I left it in. Uh, obviously, you know, all these videos are exactly what he gave me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm putting my... So, so what happens here is, if you notice, we're turning around. So, when you're coming in into a cave, and Woody, you can back me up on this. When you're going into the cave, the flow is hitting you, and it's kind of like a plane. It's pushing you up. So, you know, you're kind of going against it. And your trim, meaning your place in the water column, is being kind of held up by the water, right? By the water flow. So as soon as you turn around, you lose that lift from the water hitting you and you tend to dip a little bit. So that's what happened there. I had to use my hand and touch the rock a couple times and he wasn't happy about that, which he shouldn't be because I shouldn't be touching the cave anywhere and using my hands. And yeah, he was right. I was <laughs> There's <implied>. the hand. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, listen, you're, it's a learning experience and it never ends. Yeah. Your canister looks better there. It's, it's much more parallel to the tank. Right. So then I got back on trim eventually, but uh, it didn't look good. But look at how Medi's the guy over on the right. See how his canister is touching his tank? Yeah. I, that's how I want mine. I need to tweak mine as well. I like it like that parallel. See it? See yeah. his canister? Yeah, he's he's awesome. He doesn't like <laughs> that slight angle. <laughs> and, and two or three degrees. Right? Even if you're up a little bit. Yeah. He thinks I'm not in the right trim. The hand is probably Damn, not going to like that. It's killing me. It's tough. Yeah. <clears throat> did great. I think overall, wow. And he may not love this. Ugh. The ceiling, maybe a little bit. No, I didn't hit the ceiling, but I'm using... You see, he's, like, he's using his hands. He did it on the video. Ugh. Okay. So here I'm doing an exercise where you lose your tank. So I have to close it. 
Um, so I'm closing my tank because it like it, it just blew up. It's like leaking air, so I'm closing it so I can feather it. So I'm feathering, feathering, adding air to my wing, closing it again. So that's just an exercise we did. He's like, that's good. I want to talk about that exercise. Yeah, there are what we call booms. This Boom has drills. nothing to do with the sidewinder. It has to do with any rebreather that's out there. You're going to have boom drills. Yep. A boom just simply means something blows up. On a rebreather, you have, because you're using words that I'm not sure everybody understands. You said, I'm closing my dill tank. Right. Anybody know, besides you rebreather divers, what <laughs> Gus is talking about? Good point. So the dill tank is on his left side. You saw Gus turn off the left tank. And that is a source of air that he brings along with him that is two purposes as it relates to a KISS rebreather, whether it's the Spirit or the Sidewinder. One purpose is if your rebreather completely malfunctions, where you no longer can be on that rebreather, right there on your left and in fact on your right is a tank full of air with a regulator attached to it. Yep. You could simply what we call close the loop. So you're no longer on the rebreather, grab that regulator and stick it in your mouth and you're back to open circuit diving. And we want to plan everything such that we have enough of this bailout gas. That's what we call it to get out from the furthest and deepest point of your dive. Whether it's in a cave or it's in open water, deepest, furthest, farthest point, and we plan, a big part of a class is you plan, how much gas do I need to take based upon the dive that I'm going to do? The second purpose is the word that you used, dill. Diluent is what Gus is talking about. So, We are constantly keeping a certain partial pressure of oxygen mechanically on the KISS units. It means we're watching it on our computer and we're keeping the partial pressure at what is known as a set point. Whatever that set point is, we're trying to keep it at that set point. You probably set this up for a 1.2. That's not always the set point, but that's a standard one. The dill can be used to lower that partial pressure for two reasons. One, that it spikes for some reason, whatever that reason may be. Two is, as you go deeper, what happens to the partial pressure? Goes up. Naturally goes up. So you may need to add a little diluent to bring it back down. Diluent is regular air. I presume that's what you were carrying was 21% air. 32, but yeah. Okay, 32. Still gonna, It's still going to dial it down. It's still going to yes. dill down the partial pressure. Because if you don't do that, your partial pressure can go so high, like really high to the point where you could convulse. And start having what we call CNS oxygen toxicity issues. And we'll leave it at that. It's important to set those up. If I hear you say a word, I'm going to explain it because 95% of our viewers probably have no idea what those things mean. And 100% of our viewers love it when you stop and go into this explanation. So that's 99.9% of them love when I stop it. And those that don't, I don't care. I'm still going to stop it. But by the way, look at at what I have. I held up cards. Like this one says, a diluent flush. Yep. Right? So... We have these cards. I'm not going to go through every one of them because you'll have to take a rebreather training class. But but you do have a boom. You should look for a boom there's card. There's a boom so card. Look at this. Boom oxygen. That means your oxygen blew up or boom something, right? It could just say boom. I don't know what boomed. Well, what would you do? If somebody comes up to you and says, you have a boom, that means something's booming. What would you do? Yeah. Gus did it. In this case, you would actually cut off everything because you don't know what the heck is booming. And you look at your gauges to determine which one is zero, essentially. Yeah. And then based upon that, 
You either have diluent left and no oxygen or you have um, oxygen left and no diluent. You learn what to do based upon which one exploded. Right. All okay? of this is part of the class. So, so now it's going to set up a lot of what you're doing. Yeah. All right. Here we're doing something else. Let's see what we're doing. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm adding dill from the regulator into the loop. Like my dill button broke. So I'm adding diluent orally into the loop. So you're breathing out of your reg and you're blowing that diluent into the loop, like you said. Yep. Cut. Okay, so we're deeper in the cave right here. Uh, you see we're at 85 feet, so almost 30 meters or so. I would say 25 meters or something like that. This is heavy flow. I can still slide a little bit after the kick, so that's good. Uh, but the trim is okay. But you can see the bubbles get blown up as soon as that, as soon as they come out. All right, so here we're doing what is known as a semi-closed exercise. And in this part of the cave, and Woody's going to explain what semi-close is in a second, but in this part of the cave, there's a heavy flow to the point that I'm kicking and kicking and staying in place. So it's like a treadmill. It's pretty cool. So you can see me. I go up and up and up and up, but I'm kind of in the same place. You can see the same rocks on the, on the ground. They never move uh, in the cave, but you can see my PO2 on my computer. It's going up, and then it starts coming down, going up, and coming down, I'm doing a flush and then back down. But what I'm doing is called semi-close. So Woody, you want to go ahead and explain what that is? This is a card that we hold up a lot. SCR mode, semi-closed rebreather mode. I don't know if it's in focus. I'll yeah, do it they from can here. See it. Okay. This is one of the most important skills, I would say, when you're rebreather diving. Because this particular exercise can solve almost every single problem you have on a rebreather except for two do you remember the two that yep you would not use semi-closed rebreather for right so if you have a flooded rebreather so means full flood you brought water into the rebreather yep somehow you can't use semi-closed yep and or what's the you, other one if you have hypercapnia which means it's not scrubbing the co2 out can't use semi-closed. You can't use semi-closed. But the semi-closed is amazing. So here's what semi-closed is for. Number one, let's say you have a failed sensor. One of your sensors, you see how he has three numbers on there and they're all very, very close. Two of them are actually exact and one of them is only 0.1 different. Let's say one of those, because he's got three sensors on this unit reading his partial pressure. Let's say one of them is way off. Like one of them is reading a 1.0 and the other two are at that 0.75. Which one is right? Is it the 1.0, the single sensor, or is it the other two? Well, by doing first a dill flush, which is kind of getting into semi-closed rebreather mode, meaning you're going to flush the unit out completely with your dill gas. Right. Since you know what that gas is, then you know what the partial pressure should be at a particular depth. And once you fully flush your unit, and in fact, you can click your computer, I think it's two button, two clicks with the right button, it'll tell you this is what your partial pressure should be. On your now you yeah. read your computer and you're like, ah, those two are reading the right partial pressure. So I can rely on those two sensors. And then we thumb the dive. No matter what, if you have a problem on a rebreather, by the way, the dive is over. Yeah. So that's one or, reason. Yeah. Or the other reason is your computer dies. Your computer dies. Yeah. Right now, you, now you for sure you got to be basically at that point. I I probably would bail out. I'm just I think I would bail out. But anyway, that's that's a debatable. That's a tricky one. <laughs> All right. The second overall reason staying high level, everybody. There's many other reasons we'll get in the comments, and that's great. We want you to put them in the comments. But a big one is, what an unbelievable gas extender. Hmm. Now, I did a video, I don't remember when, not too long ago, where I demonstrated it here. And it took me 40 breaths yep. to bring that down like 0.1. So let me explain. When Gus 
goes into semi-close. For whatever reason, Ed told him he needs to go on to it. He basically Dill flushed the unit and then turned off his oxygen as if he had no more oxygen and was able to breathe on the loop for a certain number of breaths. Maybe it was 30 breaths before it brought his partial pressure down to a level where he wasn't comfortable. Like, I'm only going to bring it down to, I don't know what you want to say, 0.21 or 0.3, whatever that is. Yeah. But if he starts at that 0.76, that may have taken Gus 30 breaths on that loop or 40 breaths. I'm making that up. Yep. To so- bring it down to a level where he's like, up, oh, I got to bring in more dill again to bring it back up. So think about that. That extended that gas by 30 times. Yep. So let's talk why- about the actual numbers here well, because I still remember. Go ahead. This was reason. Um, so every time I flush with my dill, my PO2 went up to 1, okay, 1.0. And the exercise was to go down to 0.7, and it took me 14 breaths to do that. 14 to breaths. To go to 0.7. Think about that. To go to 0.7. So that is an amazing extender. Right. So if you go to 0.4, let's say, you feel comfortable with 0.4, which is still twice the pressure of regular air that you're breathing. That is, let's say, 30 breaths for every breath that you would normally take out of the tank. So you take one breath and then you breathe that 30 times and then you do it again 30 times and again and again and so, again. So this is a yeah. very big Ed Sorensen problem solver. Ed will tell you, look, I think you can solve every problem except for two, hypercapnia and a flood from semi-closed. And yep. I would recommend that as long as you have the dill left, That's what you do. There are other schools of thought that say bail out. You already planned to have the right amount of gas to get out. So just bail out, go on to open circuit and get out. And that's fine. Or you could bail out, take a minute, take a couple of breaths, think about things for a second (laughs) Then go back on and begin your dill flush semi-close. Right. And that is typically what I teach. Bail out, think, and then solve your problem. Decide what you're going to do. So you have, what I want to get to, my summary of all of this is, who has more options? A rebreather diver? Yeah. Or an open circuit diver? Yeah, and that that's an interesting topic because people do bring this up and they say rebreather divers are like suicidal. Rebreathers are so dangerous. There's actually way more options if you're running to issues. If you're running to issues with an open circuit, you know, like we saw, we have a video here where the guy's first stage blows up. Remember that DM and he just had to go up and he happened to be able to make it, but if you're inside a cave or something, it, I mean, there are some situations where you just can't go up. Yeah, this is uh, why I'm wearing anyway. my kiss scarf today. Gus, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Yeah. Did you say you're going up and up and up, meaning that you're gaining buoyancy because you were flushing? No. But I do want to bring that up. No. When you Okay. When you did a really good job then, because when you do this, when you're adding that dill yeah. flush into the loop, what's that doing to the gas volume? Yeah, it's increasing it. So that can dramatically start to change your buoyancy. So you may actually have to dump probably out of your dry suit first, but also out of the wing if you do a dill flush. So this is what's different about a rebreather. It's a complicated, you're, you, yeah. You're learning buoyancy all over again, right? Yeah. Because it's not really your breathing that's affecting. So he's dill flushing. He's bringing in a lot of volume of gas inside this closed loop. Uh Uh-oh, I'm going up, I'm going up, but I got to continue the dill flush. What do you do? Well, you got to dump some out of your wing or your dry suit. So that, it's not just a skill, especially around Ed and in a sidewinder. (laughs) Can you do this skill? Yes, you've got the mechanics, you understand it, but can you maintain trim? Yeah. Because that's what the sidewinder is all about and buoyancy at the same time. Now that is what Ed's going to focus on. Right. I know he's going to say, great, you understood it, but 
you did a really beautiful job, it looks like to me, of look at you just sitting there. Not yeah. Good job. I think the first time I and did you it can with look that. At, and you can look at the depth. I mean, I'm going 85. Like, it is moving. I was at 86. So it's Very 85 good. right now, 84, 82. But you didn't come this, up. The so, natural tendency is to change your body right. and come up like this. I'm going to do it like this. You did the drill and maintained yeah, trim. I was on trim. Beautiful. Yeah. Really so, well done. So in this one, I'm doing it blind because at some point, Eddie said, well, let's mm -hmm. test it. Let's see if you don't have any display. He loves that drill. You know, let's see if you can do it. So he is holding my arm up here. He's filming it, but I can't see it. So this, again, I know that's yeah. confusing. What, what Gus is saying is if you lost your computer, yeah, you could do a dill flush. Now you're, you're kind of guessing until you you know is it fully flushed but then you should know the how the unit works for you if i don't have a computer and i do a dill flush i'm just going to flush it as much as i can i know i can breathe 14 times that's what gus said before i need to do another dill flush so right. ed will test you okay fine cover your computer <laughs> breathe 14 times did you yeah. get down to what you thought you were going to get down to yeah so that's where Ed will say, "Why would you? And he, why would you bail out if you can? If you can do even this blindly with no computer, do semi closed?" Yeah, and he did tell me that if I didn't do this right, we were gonna do it until I got it right. Yeah, I so, remember this drill. And um, yeah, so I, well, I did it, and fortunately, he recorded the whole thing. And uh, see, so I flushed to 1.0, 1.02. So that was good. That was a good flush. And you're not looking at your computer there. No. Yeah. And I went down to 0 0.79, 0 0.78, something like that. So I actually got it right the first time. Me too. I remember, yeah. be believe it or not, on this drill, that was one of the ones that I nailed the first time. And he likes you to nail this one because he's trying to say, you see how much knowing the unit helps you? Like, yeah. it's always about the why behind right. the how. And after day two, he, that, I think that was the day that he gave me the best <clears throat> feedback. He was like... You look like a rebreather diver out there. He told me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that was good. Like, well, you, you look good. I didn't, I didn't fail any of the uh, skills. We did several. Like, do I, I get a little love for that? I added, yeah, of course. You deserve all the credit on that. But I, <laughs> I uh, not all the credit. Not all. Ninety-five percent. No, I'm just I did, kidding. I did all the skills. Um, you know, adding to the loop and doing the semi close yeah. and all that stuff, and that was fine. Day three wasn't as smooth. Okay. That that's when uh, day three I was back at I'm gonna fail the class, so let's watch. So day three was more navigation. Uh, we did do a couple of exercises, but it was just more about just swimming in the cave, you know, and just trying to get the trim right. Um, so here I am swimming with Medi and still struggling because I'm still not getting the whole thing. Okay, so this is an exercise that we do. So I think this is the one that I did the worst. Um, so for those of you watching, the exercise that I'm doing right here is something happens to my mask. It blew up. It got blown away, whatever. I'm not going to go find it. So in cave diving, we actually dive with two masks. We have a spare mask. I happen to have identical masks. I bought two that are the exact same. So here's the thing. You have no visibility. You just lost your mask. I have my eyes closed the whole time. So even though this was fresh water, I didn't want to cheat. Um, I had my eyes closed. So the point is, can you retrieve the mask from wherever you have it? And I didn't want to cheat. I had it on my pocket where I always have it. Um, so I didn't want to like put it right on my chest so it's easy, right? Um, can I get it out of my pocket while not losing the goal line? So I have the line on the cave while maintaining buoyancy, meaning not crashing into the ceiling or going to the bottom while maintaining trim while not getting blown by the flow while this is very hard to do while ed the best cave diver in the world is watching you and judging you and you're nervous right Brutal. and i think I, i'm failing the class i i think this was the moment so, that i was pretty much like this yeah rather than like this so, so this was the same so this was a total disaster so let's watch. What is it really and then go ahead and then i'm going to comment okay. on the other side well, of that story so this was the worst one I, okay. I'll, the, of all the skills I did, this was the, my worst. All right. So I'm holding the line, as you can see. I'm retrieving. But you can see I'm almost 
I'm not vertical, but I'm like, I'm bad. Trim is bad. And I'm trying to kick because of flow. Trimming my mask. Not watching. And it's hard to know if you're sinking or going up without opening your eyes. I'm just going by feel. That's gone. Then the the cap of the nerd, this thing, was under the mask. Hmm. It got caught up, so I'm oh, struggling right there with this. Nothing is working. So, yeah, so my trim was just awful, as you can see. Sinking a little bit. And then, I mean, once I have my mask on, I, I got it back together. But uh, that wasn't good. That was it. Okay. Now, I'm not Ed. I'm not in his league. And... For all I know, thinks I'm probably not a very good diver. So I'm going to comment as Woody. If in that situation, right there, that was real, and Gus lost his mask, found his mask, never let go of the line, would Gus at that point have been safe? It's just a simple yes or no. It's either a yes or and the no is he's not safe and potentially going to die. The answer is absolutely yes, he's safe. Did he have perfect trim? Was he flutter kicking a little? Good. Let me see 99.9% .9 of all cave divers do this drill, and we'll see. I'll watch him. You see, there's a difference between perfection and safety. And perfection is something that I think cave divers are always working towards but never get to. Safety, we can't not have. Safety means you can't certify somebody. You're not safe. I can't give you the card. I don't feel like you're safe. Perfection is I want you to be like me, the greatest cave diver in the world. I say, wow, I would be high-fiving him and say, good job. That's how I would have handled the positive reinforcement of how you did that skill because you did a really good job because you were safe, you were controlled, you weren't panicked, you didn't lose the line, you got the mass back under control, you dealt with another unintentional problem, right. still didn't panic, and new mask is on your face and... Now, I presume you lost the other mask. We're going to say that's the case. So that's a thumb to dive. Remember, any problem means the dive is over. That's exactly what we did. So here, we're actually exiting. So if you notice, when I, when I put the mask on, I was going against the flow. That's why I was kicking to go against the flow. But the dive is over, so we're actually finishing. This is the last thing we did to finish the class. So Medi, he is another instructor at Cave Adventures. Great guy. He is actually uh, exiting, and I'm following him with a new mask on. I think I already put the mask away, the other mask away. But I'm supposed to exit, and they go through a tight part of the cave, and I'm supposed to not touch anything. That That's the end of the class. So, Oh, is that coming? Yeah. And did they, before you do it, did they touch anything? No, of course not. They're, they're perfect they're right amazing. in the middle of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is they're legit. I'm just there. Fortunate to be next to this guy. So, okay. So, Medi heads forward, and Ed is like, you follow him. So, I'm like, all right. Oh, and this is the ending. This is it. This is all Gus has to do is get out cleanly. Yeah. That's all you got to do to that, get through this. That's it. <clears throat> While Ed is there filming... Yeah, in, in a tighter section off to the side, he's filming you. Oh, he gets worse. No, I'm saying Ed is. Oh no, he's he's in the open. But okay. yeah, it's. I'm, I I assume he can make it through that tight section too. Well, right now you look <laughs> beautiful. I, right, everybody out there, look at him. Look at Gus flowing. By the way, isn't it nice to have that flow behind you? Oh, that's he awesome. barely has to kick. Look at him. 
So this is so this is tight tighter and is up and down too. So it's meant to like let's put it all together. Let's get out of this cave through a tight section. You can see he's starting to get a little tighter. Don't mess anything. And you can see he's kicking and he's dropping silt from the ceiling. But uh, my job is to just look get at his, out of there. Look at his little baby flutter kicks. See, <laughs> see his little... Those are really beautiful. I know Ed is watching, so I just like... You don't want to do like, anything. It's like when you're doing the driving test and you just... Hmm? You want to just be perfect. Ah, uh, you look... I haven't seen anything yet that's really nice. Yeah, we're coming down here. Dumping. Nice. You s that hand of Ed's means he didn't like the the trim trim of Gus. That's how detailed he is. <laughs> yeah. He like said your trim is not good enough. That's it. Okay. But you did it. You got out very nice. Yeah. Right after that, there's the exit to the cavern. Uh, we got out. Um, I still didn't know. Like, I, I thought, I, I'm like thinking about like, when am I going to come back and Mm. actually finished the class we went back to back to cave adventures review the video he told me again you need to still work on your trim it can be better he, i like the fact that he looks at me and he's like you can do better than this mm -hmm. and i agree with him i mean i'm like i know i can i can get better um i i agree with you as well that even though it's not perfection i felt pretty safe you know out there um, and you know, at the end of the day, he just like, I, I was going to ask him, when can I come back? And he was, he was just like, congratulations. He just shook my hand and told me I passed. Well done. I think. Yeah, absolutely. From what I'm seeing here, I'm I, Yes, for sure. Using so, a DPV is a little trickier for sure. But yeah, I was, uh, I was really excited that very nice. I took the class with Ed and I was able to do enough to uh deserve it and the fact that he you know let me have the video so we can share with everyone out there so they can see that we're not perfect by any means we're not elite we don't claim to be we don't tell people we're the best in the world these guys are the best in the world yes we just we're like I, happy to be able to yeah. dive with these guys i mean i call us um it's a bad word. Recreational cave divers. I don't know what else to call. It. We, we, we cave dive less than I do. I cave dive less than I dive in the ocean. Right. I prefer diving in the warm ocean water. I enjoy cave diving. I love the skill of it, but it's hard. It really sure. is. And if you aren't doing it regularly, you need to practice a lot. You need to get in and practice before you get back in a cave and go way back. For sure. You know, if you haven't done it in a few months, do a short cavern run and practice before you get back into the cave section. Uh, and I'm speaking for myself here. Yeah, for sure. But and I hope I hope I hope what I hope this helped educate people though, not only on the sidewinder and the beauty of of its uh, ability to help you gain so much trim, but also the concepts of rebreather diving in general and why we do the various things we do and there's a whole section of cards right that's just <laughs> a few of the skills every one of these can be held up to you at any time and you really have to know not memorize but understand the why behind each one of those so that your brain says this is what i would do because if you try to memorize steps that's not going to work if right. you understand the logic of the rebreather itself, it really will help you in case of an emergency. And this is uh, this is the book that Ed helped write. It's called Mechanical Closed Circuit Rebreathers. I think it says Sidekick and Sidewinder. 
and it really if you take his class awesome. you're going to go through all of that and it goes through everything yeah for sure and for those of you thinking about getting into rebreathers especially if you're already certified in other rebreathers um you know i i cannot stress enough how you know happy i was that i took this class with ed and at cave adventures they're not paying us anything to say this or not sponsor or obligated in any way i already passed so this is not like i'm doing it so he's happy and i can pass next time this is you know, i'm right. doing this yeah. we're doing this because they deserve it, it yeah he, they deserve it they're the best um they did an awesome job and um once again i wanted you all to see kind of what you know what it looks like out there. Uh, and, you know, we got a bunch of really good comments about the Indian Springs video. People watched, you know, they saw that cave and they were like, wow. I Do you have any recommendations since. for the Kiss Orca Spirit instructor, though? <laughs> for those of you thinking about that? For sure. Uh, I, I know a guy. I know uh, a guy who knows a guy. A <laughs> you know a guy. I know yeah, a guy. I, I teach on that. And like I said, to me, the, um, the Sidewinder is a tool. Some will yes. argue different. I don't care what they argue. Yeah. A sidewinder to me is a tool, and Gus set it up perfectly at the beginning for getting through caves that require you to have side mount only that are going to be fragile or tight restrictions. Yeah. But overall, for me, the, sp the spirit, which is a back mount, it means the scrubbers are on your back, is... It's more comfortable. It's easier to get in and out of on a boat. And um, unless I need the Sidewinder tool, I use the Spirit 90% yeah. of the time. Yeah, now that I'm certified on, on both of them and I own both units, I feel like the Spirit is my favorite by a long shot. I like the Spirit a lot. Um, and I think a big part of that is I have way more experience on the Spirit as well. I feel way more comfortable. I can assemble that thing in a heartbeat. I've messed with mine. I've probably have the most highly customized spirit in the world, right? You know, uh, because I've messed with it so much. Um, so I just love it. But um, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video this week. Thank you for reacting to it and for all the feedback. Great uh, job. Really well done. Um, and uh, yeah, like we said, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video as well. And if you like any more breakdowns like this, you know, maybe we can bring some more in the future. We'll see. But uh other than that, anything else you want to add? Uh, I'm going to be diving in the Great Lakes. That's right. In the next little while, and I'm going to be with nothing but Kiss Rebreather Divers on my <laughs> Kiss Orca Spirit. So jealous. And I will have footage of me diving pretty deep on, in the wrecks of, I think we're actually uh, going to be in Lake Michigan, because hmm. we'll be closer to the Milwaukee side if I'm remembering correctly so you that's just go coming. along for the ride you never know I, i'm like where do what what wreck are we doing and okay i'm in a dry suit i remember i asked you like, where, where are you flying to and you're like i don't know chicago don't know. and then from chicago. there I, I don't have no so you, at least you know where you're going all right that's, the, that's these guys world <laughs> they invited me to go so uh, i'll have footage of that that we will post all right well thank you everyone for tuning in and uh, we will see you on the next one take care